Hello again, everybody. I'm Josh Bean from AL.com. I'm here with Jeff Chantel, here to talk about Alabama's high school football playoffs. Right now, we want to talk about the best coaches in the state. Uh, kind of look at who are, who are the coach of the year candidates. So when you look at all classes, Jeff, who are one or two coaches really jump out? It's funny. I have a leaderboard here, Josh. You know, maybe three or four weeks ago, I had Josh Floyd at Hewitt Trustful right there, even Reuben Nelson at Ramsey. You know, Floyd gets the team basically in July and gets them to the playoffs. Nelson gets Ramsey to the playoffs after a 36-year hibernation. Yeah. That's a huge story. You know, I liked what that Chris Bell did at Oak Mountain. I mean, I think that team overachieved by his physical brand of football. But lately, my decision has evolved, and I look at a guy like Jim Elgin of Pleasant Grove. I mean, the team started out one and two. Yep, but they're still playing. And they got, beat, they got beat by a couple of region foes in Ramsey and Parker. But then they just looked and saw what they needed to do. Young faces, they needed to coach them up a little bit more. They all, Pleasant Grove has great skill. And, you know, the, the thing I like best about them, you know, they're, they're in the semis for the first time since 2003. That's the, that matches the deepest trip in school history. That's great. But they've also won 10 games in a row. That's a school record. But the tug of the heart story I like the best there, and that's with the Spartans. Remember the tornado in 2011? The numbers at the school were down. The community was kind of, if you drive through Pleasant Grove, there's a lot of empty lots. And I think the players that hung around and decided to still be Spartans are reaping a reward with their final senior season of football. They have a really good young player at running back. G give the viewers a little bit of a, a taste of this young man. Yeah, Miles Mason is a guy. Um, he's a freshman. He's about 6'2". He's 180. He's going to play a lot of safety, a little running back, a little wide receiver. Remember the name Miles Mason, guys, because this kid is 6'2", 180 on the hoof. He looks like an A-list junior or a senior. I think he'll be the best player in the state of Alabama by the end of his junior year. He's, he's got Marlon Humphrey-type wheels, and that blends in well with what Pleasant Grove's doing. A lot of young guys, young skill guys, with a lot of veteran presence, and you know, I think they'll win this week, and I think they'll be a formidable opponent next week for Jackson. And with that young group, this may be a team that we're talking about for several years. But Jeff, the, the guy that I like statewide is, is Jeff Kelly there, there at Sarah Land. They got in the 5A semifinals last year. They're in the 6A semifinals this week. They play Spanish Ford again, the only team that's beaten them, really the only team that's beaten them the last couple of years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jeff Kelly, he, he was at Satsuma, uh, got them to the playoffs, went to Jackson, was successful there, has been very successful at Sarah Land. I think he's a guy that is is a, a fantastic young coach. He was a guy who played in the NFL for a short time as a quarterback. He was a star at Southern Miss. I think that he, he brings so much to the table, and that team, I think, could upset Spanish Ford on Friday night. We got a bunch of coaches, Jeff, that are still – hanging around that we expect to see at this time of year. We expect to see Josh Niblett. We expect to see Danny Powell. But when you look at the 12 teams that are still still playing, what's a coach that maybe some people would be surprised who's done a fantastic job this year? Well, I think it's the team that I didn't expect to be here anymore, and that's Pratt. Well, that's Chad Anderson. You know, he comes over from Wintumka. And, I mean, most folks, my opinion was I thought the Prattville dynasty was in decline. And, you know, now it just seems right to me that the first 7A title – has the two big T-Rexes of the old Class 6A. You've got Hoover and Prattville for the first 7A title. To me, that just feels right. It, it really does, and you know, th this will be the first game of, of the Super 7. They'll play on a Wednesday night. This will all be new, but we'll see a couple of, of familiar faces in Prattville and Hoover there. You know, the other guy uh, that I really like is Jack French down at Baker in Mobile. You know, you remember, Baker and Prattville went to overtime in the first round, so I think we could very easily be talking about Jack French and maybe Baker getting in the final had that game turned out a little bit differently. You know, Prattville uh, had to go on the, on the road three times in the playoffs, won all three. That says a lot about Chad Anderson in that group. Yeah, I really like that candidate right there. And, you know, you know, there's guys that also are in the state. You know, you look at a guy like what's happening at Deschler with the loss of their coach, and, you know, Michael Stedham, and you look at Clay Chalkville and Jerry Hood, you know, that – that program experienced a tragedy off the field in losing a linebacker, Mikhail Evans. But then they also lost their all-time leading rusher last week. And the, the Cougars still keep moving on. And I think those two, those two programs right there are a great example of resiliency. Well, we'll see which of these uh, teams and which of these coaches move on in the playoffs on Friday night. You can follow all of our coverage at AL.com or AL.com slash high school.